Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. This is our 12 Makes of Christmas series. We do this every year. We started a few years ago. We bring you 12 videos of easy projects that you can make by the holidays. And this year we're gonna be kicking it off with some free motion quilting. So we'll get to that in just a second. But I wanna give you a quick preview of some of the projects that we're going to be doing. We're gonna be doing some free motion quilting. We've got a quilt tutorial that is a nice holiday one to use up all your holiday scraps. We have got a three Christmas stocking videos that we're gonna be bringing you. So if you wanna update the ones for the family to get them all matchy matchy, you can. We're gonna do a couple of different mug rugs. And then we're gonna wrap it up with a three-part tree skirt series. So I'm gonna show you how to piece it, how to quilt it, and then how to do some bias binding around the edges to have that nice circle around your Christmas tree. So I'm really excited for this year's series. We are doing six new videos and six videos that we are recycling from years past and that you guys have enjoyed and that are still really exciting and fun to do. And I also am excited about this sweater. I love my, uh, my ugly sweaters. Uh, the last time I wore this one, I I was eight months pregnant and it made my the penguin 3d it was pretty entertaining uh, but now I'm happy to have that first Christmas with my little one and so let's get started and by the way almost everything in this series pattern wise is free there's one pattern that we're gonna be featuring that's in my new book that quarter workshop but uh, almost all the rest of them are downloadable PDFs, so you guys are able to get stitching right away if you've got the stuff in your stash but as always if you need goodies to go with this if you need some more Christmas fabric or you like what we have here um, we try to feature things that we still have at the shop and you can get that from us over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com it always is a great way to say thanks for these free videos and a lot of the free patterns and when you get inspired to do something and you get the supplies from us it's what helps keep these videos coming to you and while you're at it click the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any of the 12 weeks of christmas videos and then you can get our weekly video tutorials once the holiday season is over and we go back to our regular weekly video schedule. All right, that's enough intro. Let's get going. So I wanted to start with a nice free motion quilting stencil. This one is called Swirls and Curls. It's really fun and to me it looks like swirling snow. Now we've actually done this on a video before but it was in like the second half of a very long video where I showed you how to do a uh, Christmas stocking from start to finish. So we're going to do this one all on its own. So if you just want to learn how to do the stencil, it's super easy. You can just watch this. Um, we are doing another one tomorrow because I know a lot of you guys are trying to get those quilts finished for the holidays and that'll give you enough time to get this ordered and you can give it a try on your home sewing machine. So things you need to get started. Obviously you need a stencil. This is a special kind of stencil. It's made by Full Line Stencil. These lines are essentially the same material as like screen printing for a t-shirt. Except instead of pushing paint through, we're going to push some chalk powder through to give you a nice full line to follow as opposed to all those dots and dashes with the plastic stencils. Plus they're really bendable and you can wash them up real easy and they can iron them too if they come and they're like a little wrinkled or they get you know folded up in a drawer you can always get them nice and flat like this again I always use my machiner's quilting gloves. I love these. They come in two sizes. I'm 5'2", I have small hands, so I use the medium ones, and that works really well for me. And then today, I'm gonna to be using pink for my chalk. I find that I like to have pink and blue pounce pads on hand because you just don't know which is gonna show up better. And sometimes what looks good in the afternoon, you might need to switch to another color in the evening when the light changes. And I found that to be true when I use this on my big quilts as well. It's really easy to see on these plain ones so, so this is a really good idea to just use some of your solids or your blenders to practice on because you can see the lines, get the pattern down, and then move on. All right, I'm going to go over how to fill this up so that way you know how to do it when you get home. So you're just going to pop this off. It's just like a bank stopper from when you were a kid. And then what I typically do is I just open up like a little corner of this. Actually, this one's already open, so I'm actually going to close it. That way I can kind of direct it a little bit better. And I just want to fill it up to the point where it is nice and full at the top. All right, now I'm gonna replace that stopper, and push it all the way back down. Now I'm gonna, because I'm just refilling this, I just have to do this once, but if you're filling it up for the first time, you're gonna do this process two times, the filling and the banging. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna bang this with the plastic part on the bottom 50 times against a hard surface, hard. Like you are taking out some aggressions on your pounce pad because that is what's going to get it fully saturated and push the chalk through to the chalk applicator. So I'm gonna start banging. 
All right, so then when you flip it over, you should see that it is fully saturated. This one I've used before, so it is like the whole thing is very, very pink. Um, but if you were doing it for the first time, you would want to see kind of like a figure eight full of it, and then you're gonna know, and especially if you're using a color chalk, it's really easy to see where that's coming through. All right, so let's go over here. I'm just gonna go over how we're gonna quilt this, and then I'll show you how to mark it. So this one includes backtracking, which is one that we haven't really done too much before when we've done these free motion quilting videos. We have a lot of them. This is a great way to master some stitches that you couldn't otherwise do freehand. But what we're gonna do here, so that we don't have to continually stop and start, because that's no fun, because this is a nice all over background stitch, is we're going to start here and we're going to go around. And then when we hit the tip of the curly cue, we're gonna backtrack and stitch over our quilting line till we come out to where the curly Q ends and then we're going to immediately go into the next one backtrack go to the next one do your curly Q backtrack and you're just going to kind of keep going like that backtracking whenever you need to make it back to the next curly Q some of them have a couple of them in there where you're gonna be backtracking a couple times in a row. So when it's a good time to stop is going to be whenever you are at your tip. So when you need to reposition your hands, you're gonna come around and whenever you're at a tip like this, that's a good time to stop with your needle down, reposition your hands and then back it up and go again. And that's good because they're really nice and close to each other. So you really shouldn't be out of control. You should be able to have nice smooth curves the whole way down. All right, so I just have a half a yard of fabric here and I'm just gonna go ahead and do this straight down the center uh, because it's a little easier to practice when you can hold on to both sides as opposed to having, you know, a little bit uh, being right on the edge here that you don't have anything to grip and that doesn't work very well. So just starting laying this right down there, what I'm gonna do is holding it with my fingertips at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and just swipe. Now this is a lot of pink because I just refilled that. Normally it is not gonna look quite that pink. So you can already see it's coming down a little. I usually go over it a second time too. All right, now before I move all this, cause it's really hard to get it exactly where you had it before. I'm just gonna lift up some corners and see how that transferred and I can see it really well there. So let's check over here and Let's see, I gotta do this back part here. This was holding off the table. So let's do that. And what's really important to get is make sure that you're getting these registration marks, the little parts that look like targets because that's how we line everything up for the next bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel this off and now I can see my targets really clearly and I'm gonna line them up with the targets that are on the bottom. So you can see that here's where we start and here's where we end, so it'll just go right into it. So what I like to do is just put my fingers on the targets and kind of reposition them over. And if you're not perfectly on, it really doesn't matter because you're gonna be able to maneuver a little bit. You're never gonna be exactly on these lines and that's okay because the lines are gonna go away um, and they will stay away. That's the other good thing about this product is it is gone for good once the lines go away. I'm gonna go ahead and mark the rest of this here. All right, I'm gonna take a peek, see how that's looking. Oh, that transferred pretty well. So that's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on sewing this now. All right, so I put my extension table on my machine. It's always helpful to be able to have a wider surface to lay your hands on. You'll have more control that way. So extension tables are great, and what's even better is a machine that will sit down into your desk. But I know that that is a whole other price range, and so an extension table is a great alternative to that. All right, so a couple things. I typically quilt with my hands like this. So you're quilting in between this window and whatever you can fit in between that window, you can quilt and then you have to stop and reposition your hands. But, so you guys can see on our side camera, I quilt like this when I'm on the screen. So it's a little harder for me to get it together, but you guys can see what we're doing. So make sure you are holding your hands like this when you're doing it at home. So I'm gonna start by bringing my needle down and back up again. And that will allow me to pull my bobbin thread up to the top. 
This really isn't necessary for a practice sandwich like this one, but it's a good habit to get into. All right, so once I've got that down, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch a couple of stitches in place. The other thing I wanna make sure you guys are doing at home is making sure that the part that you've marked is sitting up and is not scraping against your body. You're just gonna mark one entire pass at a time and you have to be really careful that you don't wipe it off all on yourself or also that you're scraping your hands across. So when I move my hands, I'm gonna lift them and set them rather than scrape them across because that will remove the chalk. All right, so I'm gonna very gently set my hands down and oh I almost forgot this is one other thing I do I always turn my speed down to the medium speed that way I can go as fast as my sewing machine will allow but it won't be too fast so I'll be out of control of my stitches all right so I always kind of get my speed and when you get going you kind of have to figure out your own rhythm and you're gonna listen to the sewing machine just as much as you're going to watch it because you want it to sound steady and you don't want to have lots of revs and slowdowns. You should be going nice and steady. All right, so I've come to the center of that first row. I'm gonna stitch in place a little bit. Then I'm gonna do my best to stay on that line. But if I get off of it, no big deal. It just adds a little bit extra texture. And if you're off on every single one, people will think it was a design choice. So you're good there. All right, so now I'm moving into my second swirl. I'm gonna come into that center again, pause, stitch in place a couple times, work my way back out. All right, I'm gonna come around again. And I think when I hit the next swirl, it's gonna be time for me to pause and reposition my hands. So I feel like I'm out of, a little bit out of control at this point. All right, so now I'm gonna completely lift my hands. And again, I would normally set them like this, but for today, so you can see, I've got one hand a little bit lower into the side. So what I have to do now is I have to come into the swirl and come and work my way out. And really you're just doing that again and again as you work around. All right, center, pause for a second, work my way out. You're really looking for nice, smooth curves and nice even stitches. And the even stitches comes from having your sewing machine working nice and steady, and then also moving at a pretty steady pace. You don't wanna come up and go super fast when you're going around those curves, and then slow down a ton when you're coming to go around. That will not give you nice even stitches. All right, I'm gonna pause again. It's also a good time to kind of look forward and see what you're doing because at this point I could go a couple of different ways, um, but what I need to do is I need to come out, do my little swirl, and then do another swirl, and then finally come back and then work my way back. So if you ever need to stop and be like, wait, where am I going next? Like always do it with your needle down at a good stopping point, either right before you start a curve or when you are at the point of one. Now when I work my way back on this one, I am gonna try pretty hard to hit that curve where everything comes together so it makes sense when you look at it and you see the texture in the end. These machiners quilting gloves, by the way, have some nice grip on the fingertips and they're super lightweight. So if you get hot really easily, then this is a really good one for you to have. All right, so I quilted that first pass across my half yard of fabric here. It's just a half yard folded over, so the size of a fat quarter. You can see that a lot of the chalk is already gone. We've got little dustings of it here. What I typically do, and this is why the fingertips are many colors, is not just because I, uh, I'm touching it when I'm quilting, but also I usually just wipe it off with that as well. The chalk doesn't transfer back onto it, 
but it just comes off super, super easy. You can also use a wet washcloth. I've used that in the past to get stuff off. Sometimes it can sit a little bit in where the stitching is and you gotta work a little harder there, but it comes off super easy. And if you're able to use the ultimate white, you can iron that away. But for most Christmas quilts, you're gonna need the blue or the pink. So let's take a closer look at this. And I probably should let you guys know that I usually hate like my quilting right when I finish it. So if you're looking at this and you're like, oh God, it's because you are, you just done it. You're aware of every single time that your focus was taken away and you screwed up like right here for me. I was I was thinking about the dog and uh, I, I screwed up. I didn't get where I was supposed to. But what you want is an overall texture. And when you're quilting this on an actual quilt, there's gonna be a lot going on in the fabric. And as long as you pick a thread that blends, and if you go with a nice thin one, you can easily backtrack on you can really make that work and then the texture is what people end up seeing in the end so that is always really really pretty i actually quilt a lot with white i find that it kind of hides really well um this is a nice light pink just because that's what i had in the machine i thought it would show up for you guys but my goal here is to have nice curves and to backtrack as much as i can but if i get off a little bit no big deal it's fine all right so i'm going to show you one more thing of course i've just marked off my uh, my lines here um, but we know where they would have been so what you can do next and this is super easy is you would have had your registration marks here and here so all you would do is you would just line it up and then you would kind of once you get them lined up I kind of pull back and make sure that I'm not gonna be overlapping and then you can just swipe this next part here I'll just go ahead and actually do it so you guys can see what it would look like. You wanna always bang it a couple times before you swipe again. All right, go ahead and move that. Take a peek, see how we did. Yeah, that line transferred really well. And nothing is overlapping. Now, if you did this and it was overlapping, you kind of have to decide how bad it is because you can always wipe it off and remark it. Um, but if it's just a little bit, then you can just make an adjustment as you're quilting. So now what I can do is I can come over here, I can line that up again, and I can get that going for the next part. All right, so that's it. It's super fun, super simple, a great winter one. Really, it's a nice whimsical design to use anytime. It's called Swirls and Curls, but I like it for winter because it reminds me of snow swirling around on a blustery day. So I think it's great for those winter quilts, especially like the blue and the silver and white ones. I think that would be fabulous for the design like this. All right, well, stay tuned. We have more 12 Makes of Christmas coming up tomorrow. So make sure you are subscribed to our channel and, subs and subscribe to our email list over at shop.quiltedexanonymous.com so you don't miss any of the free video tutorials. If you like this and you wanna give it a go, you can get all the supplies that we used in today's video over at shop.quiltedexanonymous.com. If you see a project, you get inspired to give it a try. A great way to say thanks for our free video lessons is to get the supplies from us. All right, well, have a merry holiday or whatever it is that you are celebrating. And until tomorrow, happy quilting. Oh, <laughs>